Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a sit down video. This is so weird because I used to have a beauty channel and I feel like I'm on it right now. I've accelerated to a much better channel for me. And today we're going to be doing a Q&A. So, we're gonna be answering some questions. I asked you guys on Instagram, if you're not following me, here is my Instagram here. If you want to ask me any more questions, uh, you're welcome to. I also do free reading sometimes, so if you guys want to follow me on there, then that is a really good place to start. I also ask you guys on YouTube as well to ask me questions. So let's get started with the video, and first let's get started with the Instagram questions. Also, thank you so much for everyone who sent me questions. I really appreciate you. I also appreciate if you're just watching this video, if you're subscribed to me, just all the support. I really, really appreciate it, so thank you so much. So let's get started with the Instagram questions. So the first question, is well it's not really a question i found this really really cute they said oh my god you're a scorpio no wonder i resonate with you <laughs> i found that really cute and also happy birthday to any libras or scorpios out there who are going to have their birthday very soon and um, my birthday is also on halloween so people used to make make fun of me at school and say i was a witch i found it quite funny basically my birthday's on halloween and i used to have a black cat so people used to call me a witch and, I used to, and i'm like now look at me <laughs> proper going into my witchiness and I'm also really glad that you resonate with me. So thank you so much for that comment. That was really, really sweet. Skyunicorn underscore underscore. I think there's two underscores there. How did you get into tarot? And when did you think it was what you want to do for a living? So with my tarot journey, the story basically is when I was on looking on YouTube, just looking for something to watch last year around, um, I think it's about July time or January time. I really cannot remember now. But last year in 2018, I saw a video about Scorpios and it was, I don't know who it was, I can't remember, I think it may have been Kaylee Jean because she really resonated with me to start off with. I will link her channel down below if I remember. Sorry Kaylee Jean if I don't remember to put your channel down below. But basically I found her channel and basically she really, really resonated with me. I found a video about Scorpios and I'm like, I didn't even know that was a thing. Like, could people mention like tarot on YouTube? Like, is that a thing? So I watched it. And I was like, holy crap, this resonates with me so freaking hard. I was like, whoa, like phew, mind blown. Like my whole mind was like phew, blown. So basically I have flappy sleeves by the way. <laughs> my sleeves look really flappy. Anyways, I basically resonated with it really hard and I thought, oh my God, this looks so interesting. So I was actually, um, had graduated from uni. I may have watched it before I graduated uni, but I graduated uni in June or July. I graduated with a photography degree because I love photography and videography, hence why I love YouTube. I just love YouTube anyway, but so basically, but I also love tarot and I also, it's kind of a combination of I wanted to do something I really, really enjoyed. I wanted to work for myself. That was basically all I wanted to do. Me and my thick signness being the stubborn person I am, I wanted to work for myself. I was like, no, I need to work for myself. I don't want to work for anyone else. And then basically I just started my channel in January and I got my first client in March, which was really, really fun. I did it basically because I just wanted to do something that was completely new and out of the box uh, for me. But it wasn't really out of the box. To be fair, I've been spiritual my whole life. My mum's very spiritual, but I've never been really, really open about it. And it's really scary me just being open about it now. It's kind of freaking me out a little bit. But I'm like, no, Vicky, it's okay. You can do this. Because I had a YouTube channel for five years and it was lifestyle and beauty. And I loved doing it, but I never, ever, ever spoke about the fact that I was spiritual. I was so, so nervous. I was like, is anyone going to accept me for it? Are people going to think I'm this voodoo weirdo? Basically, I was very happy with my spirituality, but actually telling it to people online was like, no, 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 no. And also about the anxiety that I have as well. Um, so it's not like, it's just generalized anxiety, but basically I never used to talk about that either. And that's just like, it's like kind of scary for me. I don't know why. I started my channel in January. I did like a pick a card with an oracle deck that my mum gave. Well, actually it was my mum's oracle deck. I'd say she gave it to me, but it was her deck. She let me use it. And basically I've always been interested in oracle cards, but with the deck that she gave me is when I started using it and I did the pick a card and somebody mentioned on my comments, they were like, wow, this really resonates with me. Thank you so much. And also going back to it um, in January, I actually watched it and I picked a uh, group for myself. It resonated with me so hard. So now I'm really, really excited to actually do tarot. And when I said to my mom about doing a, cha a tarot channel, she was like, maybe you shouldn't call it like the Crystal Girl Tarot or something like that, because obviously I don't know how to do tarot. But over the couple of months that I was watching videos and kind of watching, because in January, I didn't know how to do tarot. I had no idea. I picked it up quite fast because I'm quite a visual, well, I am a visual learner, video and video and video and auditory learner. 
I think that's the right word, where basically you listen and you watch videos to kind of learn through YouTube, how to do tarot. I didn't actually watch any sit down videos. They were basically like, this is tarot, this is what you need to do. It was like, this is a uh, reading about Scorpios, like midweeklies, bi-weeklies, um, monthlies, stuff like that. And I watched all of that stuff. I just absolutely fell in love with it. And I was like, wow, this is so amazing. All I wanted to do was to help people. I wanted to, um, I wanted to assist people with their journeys, with spirituality, because I have had a really hard life, guys. Like I'm only 22 and I'm not being vain or anything and saying, oh, my life is so hard. But honestly, guys, I've had a, like, my life has been extremely hard sometimes. Like it's been to the point where I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Um, and it's got to that point quite a few times in my life. It's been really, really intense. Tara really helped me to kind of show people that it's gonna be okay. And I've always wanted to help people like all the time. So that's how I, <laughs> that's how I got into it. Sorry, that's really, really long. But I might put some time to that down below if you guys are interested in other questions, if you're not really bothered about this one. Okay, moving on. That's how I got into it. And what do I wanna do for a living? I wanna do tarot for a living, like full on, just I wanna carry on doing it. As long as you guys wanna keep watching me, I absolutely love YouTube, I love spreading awareness of spirituality, I love helping people, I know how hard it is having a spiritual awakening and I just, I feel it's so hard in my heart that I need to help people in every, any way I can and I feel like with readings I actually use my gift and people say that it's a gift and I'm like, is it a gift? Because I've always had it but I've never actually used it to help people so it's kind of like wow, I'm actually like using something I've always had which is, which people have, have always thought is weird and now I'm on this like tarot community where everyone's thinking oh my god it's like a gift and I'm like what is this? <laughs> it's great though, I'm not complaining, I'm, I'm having a great time. <laughs> Somewhat Decent One said what made you smile today? I got a Costa <laughs> which is um, like Starbucks if you guys don't know what it is, I got a Costa which I'm very happy with and glad I have the money to buy that, that's what made me smile today. I also made me, what also made me smile is the fact that it's very, very warm today. It's really, really nice weather and it makes me very happy. So thank you for your question. Also, what made you smile today? Um, please comment down below. That'd be really, really nice. What's my favorite color? My favorite color is pink. Everything in my room is pink or white or blue. <laughs> I love pastel colors. I love florals. Yeah, that's my favorite color, pink and blue, like baby blue and baby pink. How did you first know you had a gift? So I first knew I had a gift. I don't a gift because it's like, for me, it, it's kind of been my personality for my entire life. So in terms of actually being psychic, the first time I knew was when I had my first client in March and she'll know who she is that she's watching. I hope she doesn't mind. I won't, I won't say her name actually, but she was my first client. I did a reading for her, a five minute reading, and she said, oh my God, that was so accurate. And I'm like, you talking to me? Like, <laughs> me? And, and then she was like, no, that's really accurate. Like, and then she was like, oh, can you do me a yearly reading? And I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> that was like one of the best days of my life, not gonna lie. Like when she gave me a purchase, I was like, holy crap. Like this is actually resonating for people. So in terms of actually being psychic, I've, I've been psychic pretty much since I was about like, seven years old. Um, from what I can remember, not actually being full on psychic, like, I didn't actually use my psychic abilities, but I've always been extremely sensitive. A highly sensitive person is pretty much me. Um, a lot of you guys I know can relate to this, but I never knew that I was a highly sensitive person until I watched a YouTube video about it. And it was basically traits of a highly sensitive person. It had a massive list of all the, the traits. And I was like, I'm related to every single thing on this video. And I'll try and find it down below guys, because I find it so fascinating because it made me feel not alone anymore. Like pretty much my whole life, I've never had people I can relate to. It's only been literally since probably March time this year is when I first found people who really resonate with me and really kind of, I can actually be like my whole hearted self with. It's actually insane guys. Like honestly, when I say my life's been difficult, <laughs> it ain't been a picnic. <laughs> so when I, in sense of psychic abilities, probably March this year, but in terms of actually being like um, aware and um, very sensitive and almost pretty much psychic, pretty much like seven years old. Um, very young age. I've always been an old soul, so I've always been older than my actual age. So when I was about seven, I was probably about 15 in my head. Next question. Thank you so much for your questions, guys. Moving on to the next one. What else do you do apart from tarot like interest outside? I like watching Marvel. <laughs> Marvel's my favorite. Um, I absolutely love photography and videography. I'm gonna do a shoot soon. I'm really excited to do that. Just like a hobby. I love running. I love um, art. I do photography, art. I used to do nail art. I used to have a whole YouTube channel about nail art. I love singing. I love playing my ukulele like a little white girl. <laughs> uh, no, 
offense to anyone's got a ukulele but i just think it's cute but also the ukulele is so easy to play guys so if you're thinking about playing a musical instrument the ukulele is such a good thing to play um, i also love what else do i love i love crystals so weird to say like saying i love crystals just in a normal video it's just so weird to me it's so crazy yeah just anything creative guys like honestly anything creative you can really think of Maybe not everything, but a lot of things. Yeah, I love yoga and dancing and yeah, I like a lot of things. It's just, I, I kind of do them like, not like I don't go to a club or anything. I just kind of do it as a hobby. Like I just do, I do like just dance on my Switch. Like I'm not afraid to say stuff like that because I think it's so fun. Oh, I love like Nintendo. I love Nintendo and Marvel. If you guys like Nintendo and Marvel, please let me know because I freaking love it. So that's what I love outside of uh, tarot. Roshni, which is your favorite crystal that you prefer wearing all the time? So my favorite crystal that I prefer wearing all the time, it's basically a practical crystal is my hematite which is like this one here it actually is a scorpio bracelet which is really crazy i went to a crystal shop and i was like do you have any hematite bracelets and she was like yeah yeah we have hematite and i was like oh my god it actually says scorpio on it it's made for me <laughs> so yeah i love it um it actually is really really good for overthinking for grounding key i noticed it when because i'm not an overthinker um hopefully not anymore because i'm meditating a lot but when i'm in restaurants and things and i'm talking to somebody like directly in front of me sometimes i have trouble focusing on the person when they're talking i'm normally looking around or like hearing all the music or talking or watching waitresses or wait waiters kind of move around like i'm always distracted the hematite basically grounds you and it's so good for highly sensitive people like i highly recommend it and also really highly recommend wearing crystals because they're so much better than having them in your, your pocket because one you'll probably lose them and two um i think it's really helpful to have it on your pulse because for some reason it just it just circulates the body better um and i also have ametrine which is really good for um overthinking as well which i really like selenite is also really good to wear when you're channeling and citrine is also really good for happiness as well so I re i've been really liking those but my main one is hematite i wear that every single day even when i'm sleeping sometimes if i'm having bad dreams uh it normally grounds me and it sorts me out <laughs> Do you practice yoga? Yes, I do practice yoga. I try to do it daily. I don't do long practices because I don't really like doing that because I always fall asleep. The concentrated little segments is mainly what's best for me, but obviously it suits everyone differently. But yeah, I do have a daily practice of yoga. Thank you so much for that, Roshni. Just being me, hun, how old are you? I am 22. I'm 23 on October 31st, Halloween. <laughs> Favorite sign other than your own? So my favourite sign other than my own, oh this is a hard one. See it's hard because I want to say Cancerian because it, it's my moon sign so that's kind of a bit meh. Uh, meh. I sound like a sheep then. Meh. All the water signs. In terms of like my favourite sign, I can't really decide because they're all good in their own ways. Aries is always a really good one because Aries are normally pretty um, sorted. Like in terms of how they interact with me as a water sign. My mum is an Aries and she's also Sag Moon. Hopefully she won't mind me saying that. <laughs> she, she probably won't mind. But she basically sorts me out when I'm getting overthinking. And she's like, okay, Vicky, you got to sort yourself out. I'm like, calm down. Aries uh, do get angry quite quickly, but then they snap out of it really quickly, which I really like about them because you know you're always going to be kind of on a good note with them you know and normally they're pretty good at kind of getting things sorted they're very eager they're very determined and i like that in a sign um because I'm, I'm quite a lot like that i don't think i have any aries in my chart though i'm pretty much i'm pretty sure i don't so really like pisces depending on obviously their other elements and same with aries but i feel like with pisces they're really really good at um, interacting with people on a deep level and i absolutely love that i love water signs i like virgos but it depends on obviously on their other signs because they can be quite perfectionist which is totally fine because i'm virgo rising i'm a perfectionist um i'm sharing so much in this video it's so weird i don't think there's any other signs that really come to mind um yeah, I don't think there's any other signs really that I can really think of. Thank you so much for your question. What's your favourite crystal and why from Hannah? So my favourite crystal is Aura Quartz. I love Aura Quartz because you can get all different ones. You can get Titanium, you can get Angel, you can get, I don't I can't remember all the other ones, but they're, so, oh god, they're absolutely stunning. Like they're so, so pretty. And I have one that looks like a Barbie crystal. I absolutely love it. Okay, so there is a lot of crystals that I love. Um, I'm gonna show you another one that I love too. So these are all my Aura Quartz that I have. It, this is my Barbie crystal, I love it. It's so pretty. And then I have another one which is titanium covered. Basically it's covered in metal. Isn't that so pretty? It's so stunning. 
and then I also have Angel Aura Quartz which is this one here um, it's just a clear one but it's got like slight rainbow in it very iridescent I love it and then also another one that I really like um, when you struggle possibly like with relationships worrying about like a certain person things like that this is really really good for kind of any relationship issues friendship issues any sort of thing this is called garnet very very good for commitment and things like that so i love those crystals thank you so much for your question hannah what's your favorite food mine is chinese i love this question okay because i love talking about food <laughs> so my favorite is thai food i think i was born in a different country like honestly guys <laughs> no i was born in england but i love thai food and i love japanese food so yo sushi sushi food thai food oh my freaking god favorite food of all time I love it, it's so freaking good. I love that yours is Chinese, that's such a good one. How do you deal with people that exclude you or people that don't like you? Wow, okay, so this is a really deep question. So basically, a lot of my life in terms of friendships have been pretty rubbish, but that's because it's me kind of learning how to deal with it. Pretty much because I'm very authentic, not to be vain, but I'm very kind of honest, um, and I never wanna have my honesty to hurt anyone. But sometimes I'm very honest in the sense that like, this is who I am and I'm not gonna change it. And a lot of people kind of leave because of it, which is for now, I'm actually pretty happy with it now because I'm very happy with the friends I have. But, and sometimes it happens for a reason, you know? So how do you deal with people that exclude you? So I'm gonna tell you a tiny little story. It's a little, just a little, little segment. Um, is that when I left school, um, I was bullied for about six months before I left school fully. Basically, I was completely ignored. I wasn't, it was It was kind of gross the way they treated me. I don't have any feelings towards it, but I'm just telling you as an example. So basically, I was completely ignored and pretty much I was, they, were tr I, they treated me like I was non-existent and I was in their class. So I was, they were really good at ignoring me, let's just say that. So that's how, how I dealt with it was I was really, really strong. I did counselling. I spoke to my mum. I spoke to anyone who would listen in terms of someone I trusted. And I distanced myself as much as I possibly could. And I bit, pretty much was lonely for a lot of my school life in terms of friendships. I had friendships pretty much most of the time, but I never felt like I was included in them most of the time in terms of like a deep friendship because a lot of them were very immature. And being my old soul, I was like, I don't get along with any of these people. <laughs> But in terms of how I dealt with it, uh, counselling, talk to people you love, journal, exercise. I used to run a lot to kind of get all the energy out. Yeah, and just do things on your own. It's it's so much more helpful. It's better to be on your own than with people who don't appreciate you. That's pretty much it. And if people don't like you, in school it's so difficult. Like school life was not fun for me. Yeah, being highly sensitive, guys, it's really, really difficult sometimes especially in school so um it's really really helpful if someone doesn't like you you're better off just trying to get away from them as much as possible have you ever used the law of attraction has it worked for you love you love you too the law of attraction i actually attracted a house i can tell you guys a story that of that if you want to i won't do it now but in a separate video if you guys want to know that i also attracted meeting my um my crush like a celebrity crush <laughs> and i also attracted uh friends as well so if you guys want to know how i did that um, then please let me know but it was a process guys it's not like immediate but I think with objects it is easier to manifest them and apart from like people people are a little bit harder to manifest um so yeah I'll let you know that guys if you guys want to see a manifesting video then I can do that for you guys how did you get better reading tarot cards um I watched loads and loads of videos not to learn but to basically just watch my readings for scorpios i used to watch all of those and that's how i learned pretty much just practice and practicing with people I, I did a lot of free readings before i started doing any paid readings before i did it before just just practice with people practice with people who you feel comfortable with and also don't feel bad if it doesn't resonate with people sometimes it will resonate in the future or sometimes you know that message was just for something else you know but it's never wasted. Also a tip for you guys, if, you, if, you, if you're a channeler or you want to go into tarot, if you think of something weird while doing someone's um, reading, normally it's pretty true. Like I get a lot of weird messages and I'm like, that's not gonna resonate. And then they're like, oh my God, that resonates so much with me. Like, I'll get like a cat running up a tree. And then they'll be like, oh my God, my cat ran up a tree like three weeks ago and I was so scared. Like, you know? <laughs> it's, it's crazy, I love it. So thank you so much for everyone who uh, asked me a question on YouTube. I will try and answer as many as I can. I won't probably won't answer everyone because this video will be super, super long, but I'll try and do some timestamps down below if you guys get bored of certain questions that I answer, okay? This is a really good question. This is from Copper Dove. It said, I'd love to know what tips you have for protecting oneself when helping people as a light worker. Uh, protecting negative energy, when you encounter certain clients, struggle with being a light worker. 
I don't know how to shield themselves. Okay, so in terms of protecting yourself, hematite, really, really good. Wear it all the time. Um, grounding yourself, really, really good. I always, I always, um, every time I do a reading, or I try to do every time I do a reading, is to ground myself. I use an incense stick. And after every single reading, I say, release any energy that isn't mine now, thank you. And I just open my hands up like this and sit them on my knees, or I just kind of open my arms out like this, like, like this. Uh, not, I put them down here, I'm just trying to show you guys, like I do that and put them down here. And I just let the energy flow out of my hands. In terms of protecting yourself, it's really good to incense and, um, and just basically affirm I contain any energy that's mine and release any energy that's not mine. Um, spray yourself with um, aura spray, just kind of anything that works, even a crystal, you can, some people use a crystal and they kind of just like do this around their aura. I never really do that, but it feels kind of nice. Um, that's really, really good. And also just being conscious of the fact that people's, when you're very sensitive, you suck up people's energy like a sponge. When I was at school, I used to get really, really stressed out and I used to come home really, really angry for no particular reason, but literally because I was so sensitive, I used to suck up all the horrible energy from all the people at school. I went to an all girls school as well, so extra, extra stressful. Basically my mum was like, sit down, or she's like, stand there, and she used to just sage my aura, and she was like, do you feel better? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so when I came home, I was like really pissed off and annoyed, um, but then that really helped me. So just be aware when you're at school, work, anything like that. You suck up people's energy like a sponge most of the time. So just be careful of that. And also crystals that are black are so good at protecting you. Especially if you're going to have an argument with somebody. You know you're going to have an argument. Black onyx. Trust me, it's worked. I've used it before. How to make connection with intuition or higher self for picking the right card and also for taking life important decisions. Okay. Intuition. Meditation. You have to separate and get rid of this all the busyness otherwise you can't let any messages in it's like filling up a room with stuff and clutter and then sitting in it and feeling like crap because everything just feels messy but then you when you tidy it it's so much better because you have so much room you have room to think i definitely notice when i don't meditate that i'm not getting messages quick enough um and also to let you know uh intuition fluctuates I don't know why I'm doing this. Woo! <laughs> but intuition fluctuates, so it will kind of go up and down. Sometimes I'm thinking, why am I not getting any messages? But sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. And that's why people use cards, because it's a much easier way to help you channel. And sometimes you don't even have to use cards. Um, but sometimes it's nice, you know? When tuning in, use crystals. Selenite's really, really good for that. Clear quartz and other crystals like amethyst and things like that. Whatever suits you the best. I feel like selenite suits me the best. Um, in terms of like picking life, important life decisions, I do struggle with this. Since channeling and using my intuition much, much more, I actually struggle with it more. I think it's because I'm possibly using it a bit too much. Or I'm just, I just need to balance it out pretty much. I probably need to meditate a bit more. But when an important life decision needs to happen, it's always good to use cards because then you're basically um, not connecting to your ego and the ego isn't getting in the way saying you should do this and blah, blah, blah. Also, um, just sitting and thinking about it, you know. Um, also, guys, do you want a video on meditation? Like, do you guys want a video on how to meditate? Because I'd really like to do a video like that. Has every soul that incarnates here has the intention of awakening? I'm pretty sure they do. Not actually, no, not every soul. <laughs> I've met some souls that aren't too, uh, let's just say they're a bit too down to earth. <laughs> they're not really kind of integrated with spirituality, but obviously I'm not judging. Everyone has a different path. Not everyone is meant to awaken. Let's just say that. When you feel so drawn to someone and you can't get away, if you try, what does that mean? Well, it means you're very connected with them on a soul level. Pretty much it. You're pretty much as connected to them on a soul level. What are the signs that we're going through a spiritual awakening? Repetition of numbers, synchronicities, definitely 100%. And also, most of the time, you're feeling pretty weird and sensitive and confused. <laughs> And yeah, pretty much, because spiritual awakening isn't fun. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, it's not fun all the time. The afterwards is pretty great. <laughs> Have you ever gotten scared of things that you hear intuitively or guides? Uh, yes, not in the sense that it's freaked me out, but in a sense that I possibly don't want to hear it. Like, cause you know, you don't always want to hear the truth. Also, it's it can come really randomly and I can get very intense signs. Um, when I was going through my twin flame journey, I had a sense of my soul being ripped out my body. That wasn't fun. It was trying to get to my, it was trying to get to my twin flame. It was like, ah, take me out my body. And I'm like, Vicky, you ain't going anywhere. <laughs> your soul is in your body, mate, sorry. <laughs> so stuff like that. How do I awaken my spiritual gifts, abilities and powers? Meditation, getting grounded, feeling present in the moment. Um, basically, I, my thing is, if you can stare at a brick wall 
for more than five minutes without getting irritated, that's a really good sign. <laughs> um, because it means your mind is clear. That's when you know your mind is clear. Um, or like a minute, yeah? Um, or you just feel good away from distraction. The less distraction you have, the better you're gonna be able to get in, because you've got to clear, as I say, clear the mind before you can get into it. How do you usually regain your energy when feeling drained? I love this question, because I do feel like that a lot. Sleeping. <laughs> Meditating doesn't really help, but it's sometimes like it if I'm overthinking. Wearing the right crystal for that day. Sometimes I'll pull a card to help me with that. I'm also eating the right food. Some I've got I've gone off, gone off wheat a lot, of, not a lot now. A lot I've kind of cut down sugar. If you're intolerant to something, that can be a reason why you feel drained. Not always. Drink drink a lot of water. Drink drinks that are kind of can flush out the body and things like that. What are your thoughts about star seeds? I love star seeds. I think I'm a star seed as well. I think the word starseed is so cute. I just think it's such a cute little word. I love starseeds. I think they're amazing. I think they're highly intuitive, highly sensitive. Um, always felt alone a lot of the time. Felt secluded. I think a lot of starseeds are mainly the ones that have been awakened for quite a long time, but that's not always true. Because obviously everyone awakens at different times, but I love starseeds. Please suggest meditation for heavy heart feelings. So I suggest... Um, Having a crystal on your heart and get one that protects your heart just for until you can kind of cope and then meditating on self-love i think that will really really help you and also to get out your head um meditation will really help just any sort of meditation okay so that's all the questions thank you so much everyone for giving me a question i really really appreciate it thank you so much if you've made it this far through the video thank you so much um to everyone who's supported me through this journey honestly it means the entire freaking world if you guys have any suggestions for me for anything i should read watch um if i should do a yoga video or like a manifestation video then please let me know and yeah i love you guys so much thank you for watching and i'll speak to you very soon Bye.